Today we are going to be creating an abstract blockchain inside of Maya by using some match dynamics. So let's quickly get into it. And yeah, I'm calling it blockchain because it looks like a block uh, connected with a lot of chains. So let's see how we can do that. Uh, so yeah, I'm here in my modeling menu and here you can find your mash. And before actually getting into the mash, we have to create our primitive. And for some reason, if you don't have your mash around here or if you go to uh, animation, you can't find your mash here. Uh, that's probably because you don't have mash turned on. So make sure you go to the plugin manager. And if you scroll down here, you should find something called as the mash.mll. So make sure you load it and you'll be good to go. Anyway, so I'm going to start off by taking a simple cube. This is uh, what my primitive will look like. And I'm going to convert it just a little bit. So here I'm going to just change the width to something like maybe a 3. All right. Uh, I think that's too big. So let's go for a 2.5. All right. That looks like a brick, uh, a nice block to play around with. And uh, for the subdivision, what I'm going to do is change this to simply 2. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of bevel, so I'm going to click on the bevel and if I select, uh, if I go closer here, you'll find that we get something like this. So what I'm going to do is reduce the amount of fraction to right about there. And let's increase the amount of segments we have on our block. That we will get a nice block here. If I press 3 just to make it a smoother mesh, you'll find that we get a pretty nice block. Even in the solid mode, it looks pretty good. Alright, so from here it's uh, pretty much good to go. I'm going to call this a block. Right. And now I'm going to go to the mash and I'm going to click on this, which is basically create mash network. So let's click on that and instantly it will create this array of clones. It's basically a lot of, uh, you can see, I'm going to click on the GPU in the repro just so it uses our GPU. Now the first thing you're going to do is go to your distribute node and you'll see that you get a lot of distribution here. You can change how many distribution it should have, how much clones you want and so on and so on. And the distribution type has been set to linear. For our case, what we want is the grid, right? So this looks um, good to me. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, kindly tweak it. Now I'm going to go to the distribute and I'm going to add, we have X, um, uh, the division has been set to 3 and uh, 3 for the Z direction. I'm also going to add some more for uh, the Y direction. And let's maybe add a bit more for the uh, X z and let's maybe add a bit more to the y right so this looks good and maybe let's uh we can reduce maybe for the y and from here again we have to manage how we want our distribution to be so i'm just going to go for something like maybe 0.4.5 and then again we have to make sure they are kind of nicely uh distributed between each other all right so this is what we have and uh, uh, yeah, I can. I guess we can go for five by five. All right, so this is what we have. Looks pretty good. I guess so. We have a lot for our Z. I think we should uh, probably reduce this. Uh, so again, I'm going to reduce the overall value here. And uh, so this is what we have. Looks pretty good. All right, so we have a nice uh, match network here to start to play around with it. All right, the next thing that we are going to do is pretty much uh, we are going to add some dynamics into here. So I'm going to go to my mash network here. You can select your mash network and make sure you have your outliner uh, opened up. If you don't have your outliner, you can go to windows and uh, click on this outliner. Uh, the other thing that is important, uh, which is not exactly mandatory, but if you have, it will be pretty helpful for you, which is the mash editor. Here you can pretty much play around with whatever you want, whatever you want to add and have a basically a layer wise distribution how things are pretty much happening inside of your mesh like you have your mesh network inside that you have a distribution and then we have more and more stuff inside of our mesh so it's pretty useful for your uh, working around all right so i'm going to add here you'll find uh, the dynamics i'm going to click on this and add the dynamic node once you've added the dynamic node you'll notice that you get this uh, different type of grid with a plus icon on it it's basically a collider or you can say a ground plane which uh, allows the whatever the object you have in your scene uh, to not fall down into a deep space. This is the end zone for it. It will collide with this invisible plane here. If I play this, you'll have something like this. So there you go. All right. So you've noticed that it falls pretty nicely. So what uh, the next thing that we want is not uh, all of these not falling down exactly. So what we can do here from uh, now on is go to your mesh and uh, in the dynamics we can play around with a lot of different things like for example we have the amount of friction, we have the amount of uh, bounciness you have in here and a lot of different things as well. 
Uh, but apart from that, we get this bullet solver, which is uh, pretty much what is controlling the overall dynamics here, which is the solver of our dynamic system. So here you'll find that we have something called as a gravity, and uh, the value has been set to the default value of our Earth, which is the 9.8. So I'm going to make this zero, which is going to allow us our uh, pretty much blocks to stay at the same place. And now you'll find that a little bit of turbulence is affecting our block, which looks pretty interesting. Now what I'm going to do here is obviously we don't have a certain amount of field for the mesh network. They don't have their own field. So what we are going to use is our dynamic field, uh, the native field of Maya. So I'm going to switch my menu to FX. And here you'll find that we have this fields and solver where you can play around with different fields, which we have already covered in a lot of videos. So here I'm going to um, click on the turbulence. We are going to take the turbulence and you'll get this error and that is totally fine. Don't worry about the error. And uh, so this is our overall turbulence, all right? So what we are going to do is we are going to attach our native turbulence to the mesh network. So I'm going to click on the bullet sol solver here. And here you'll find the field menu. So I'm going to select this middle mouse button, click and drop it on your field. And there you go. And now it's attached. So now you won't get any error and you'll find it's affecting very little. So what I'm going to do is just to show how uh, strong it is. I'm going to make the value to 100. And now you can see how it's affecting the overall system. So I'm not going to make it a hundred. I'm going to keep it somewhere like maybe a 75 or maybe let's go for a lower number like 50 and let's maybe add a noise level of two. That will just give a bit more randomization to it. Uh, the next thing that we are going to do here, you'll notice that our blocks are pretty much flying around in the overall dead space and they'll keep flying around and so on, which we don't exactly want. Let's make it to 50. Right, and uh, which we don't exactly want. So to stop that, we have to create something that's going to make them stay at one place. So to do that, the best thing is to take a Newton solver. Uh, sorry, a Newton field. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to bring this Newton field up here. And I'm going to select my bullet solver again and middle mouse click and drop it on your fields. Right, so there you go. Now, if you go to your Newton field, it's pretty weak because magnitude value has been set to 5. So, I'm going to increase this to maybe something like a 25. I think the 25 will be a pretty great value. I'm going to go for 15. And let's see how it works. Then we can keep increasing our value. Alright, so the 15 works pretty great. And uh, even though the blocks are uh, going far, they are still trying to connect at some point. So, I guess we can go for a higher value, like maybe a 25. And that way, it will pull the, the pulling power will be pretty much... A lot greater right so now we have something like this looks pretty good now for the final thing what we want is these all uh, blocks to be connected by a chain a blockchain so what we are going to do is go to the mash network here and here you will find the constraint I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna uh, create basically so you'll find this mash constraint I'm gonna double click here and here you'll find that we get a lot of parameters here to play around with now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here and I'm going to create. This will create a random channel where we can pretty much play around with different things. Uh, but we are going to keep it to default. We don't have to worry about anything. We just want a default random which has been connected to our overall dynamic. Now again I'm going to go to my mash dynamic. Uh, double click on your mash container. Alright and here uh, we have our overall constraint. The first constraint that we have added and the only constraint that we are going to be needing. Here you'll find that the connection mode has been set to connect nearest. That means it's going to connect everything that is uh, the nearest to him. All right. So if I go back here, you'll find that it has connected. You'll find this yellow guides. Don't worry, this won't be uh, visible in your final render. This is just for the guiding purpose. Now, uh, so here you have a search radius. You can increase this and you'll find that it's uh, pretty much connecting more and more points as you go higher or lower. So I'm going to go for a value of maybe a 3.5 and then we can see how much we want to change this. The next thing that we have is the maximum constraint. So I'm going to go for a number called 10. Um, and then we are going to let it play. But before playing again, you have this type set to glue. You can change it to whatever you want. But for this effect, glue is perfect. Now here again, you have this breakable, which allows the overall constraint to break apart. Now what we are basically doing is we are trying to connect and keep these blocks stick to each other. And if you want them to break apart, you can use this breakable. I'm going to keep this to off before uh, we can actually jump into it. We, we are just going to visualize how this overall looks. So here you'll notice that we, ha we are pretty much, uh, pretty much all the way connected uh, to the overall blocks and we don't find that much of a difference. So I'm going to click on the breakable. And then we can see how we can play around with this, right? 
So again, there are different uh, things by which you can pretty much connect this. I'm going to go for a number. There you go. Connect point, which is uh, not exactly what we want. Uh, but we want is I'm going to increase the search distance just so it doesn't pretty much uh, keep each other at the same place. All right. So we have something like this. Uh, the connection is pretty strong. I have to say that. So what I'm going to do is keep increasing the number. We have the maximum constraint to 10. I'm going to go for a lower number. Let's go for a 4. And then we have this breaking apart, right? Which uh, looks pretty good. I'm going to go for a lower search distance. Right? I guess we have to go higher then. And uh, let's go for even lower. Right? Let's go for a 2 value. And now we have something like this. Uh, now this looks pretty good, but uh, again, we want a little bit more dynamics in here. All right, so there you go. Now we have something like this, uh, a lot of blocks connected to a chain, which are pretty much uh, swinging around. And there you go. So now, uh, since we have connected all of these uh, polygons to each other, right, and uh, there is no exact way of showing that because if you render this, uh, this yellow line is only for the guide purpose, it's obviously not going to show in the final render. So what we want is uh, to create some kind of thing that will connect all of these blocks together, we pretty much create a chain uh, in between them, right. Uh, so if you are finalized with this, if you are pretty much satisfied with this before jumping into the next, make sure you are pretty much satisfied with everything that you have done so far. Uh, if you don't want this, again, you can tweak around and play around how you want this to be, how this, you want the overall look to be. And once you are satisfied, uh, we can jump into the new thing, which is pretty much creating the chain. So again, we have to go to our mesh and go to your mesh network. And here uh, in the bottom, add utility, you will find called something called as trails, which is going to create a trail. Uh, of motion. So I'm going to click on the trail, add trail node and it's going to add pretty much some trails of anything that's moving around and here you'll find a very thin amount of lines. I know if you can see this, this is, this is uh, pretty much uh, what trails are and if I were to make this visible, there you go. So this is what uh, trails look like. All right? And uh, again, you can change the scale and everything and if you play around, uh, you'll find this, uh, we have something like this, which looks pretty interesting. Now, obviously, we don't want exactly something like this. We don't want the trails to be uh, flying around like some kind of wavy motion or like a fish or something. What you want is a chain that is connecting everything. So here, what you can do is you can change the trail to join the dots. All right. So now when you play around with this, you'll find that you get this pretty much chains connecting each other. So I'm going to make the chains a bit more lower in size, maybe like two. And now you have something like this. So every block is pretty much connected by a similar chain, which is kind of, it's uh, similar to like a spider's web. So it's connecting each other. So now this is pretty much a renderable. You can render this out, play around with it, have fun with it. And now you can, it's everything here is completely procedural and dynamic. You can always go back and change everything that you don't want. You can increase the amount of count if you want. Uh, again, totally up to you. You can increase the tail, um, trail, sorry, size and everything. I'm going to keep it to two although. And again, you can increase the curve sample so it's a bit more subdivided. And then again, you can play around with this to create something pretty interesting like this. All right, so from here again, you can uh, jump into the lighting issue. I'm not going to jump into the lighting shading. I'm just, if you want, I can show you a bit uh, light in mode. So I'm going to just quickly take a simple HDRI to showcase how this looks. All right, so I've loaded in my HDRI and uh, let's see how this looks in a light in mode. All right, so this is what you have. So here you'll notice that you get this uh, chain connecting um, to your overall scene. So again, uh, you can have fun with this. You can go to your trails and you can have fun with it. Uh, maybe add a bit more size if you want them to look uh, pretty big. You can add a bit. If you want, you can increase the amount of counts you have in your scene. And then again, uh, just have fun with it. Play around with it and uh, you'll, you'll have something like this. So enjoy this and uh, try to create something interesting out of this. This is a pretty uh, good and new concept to have fun with it. So um, the amount of uh, efforts it takes is a very few. It's a pretty simple and straightforward procedure and you can have a lot of fun creating it. And uh, just because of the reason that it looks something like this, that's why I named it blockchain. 
so yeah have fun creating something interesting like this and uh, share the light in if you do create something out of it uh, share with me i'd love to see what you come up with and that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video